must die young. My mic was muted. I'm sorry about that. Welcome to another retro review and discussion with um, me, Lance Nielsen, one of the co-founders of the Outcast Creative. I've got a, an assorted mix of clothes on this evening because I went for dinner, so I'm dressed all smart to meet my uh, friend's girlfriend for the first time. Uh, but it is also freezing cold in England. Um, it's snowing in many places. So I've now also got an Outcast hoodie on to keep me warm because I can't afford to put the heating on, you see because the heating bills are now like a thousand pounds a quarter. So anyway, I'm going to be talking about an old favorite um, film of mine, uh, a bit of a uh, history uh, um, behind also how I got to see it, which is quite funny um, back in the day. And that is the 1976 film Sky Riders uh, starring James Coburn. Uh, but before I get into talking about it all, <clears throat> um, very kindly at the last minute, uh, one of my subscribers, who's also got um, a YouTube channel of their own, um, just starting out, a bit like myself, uh, TNTV, Tim from TNTV, that rolls off the tongue quite nicely, has agreed to join me, and I'm just going to bring him on now. There he is. Hey, Lance. How are you doing? Oh, good. It's all working. Fantastic. <laughs> well, that's the first time for everything. Yeah, indeed. Good to see you. Uh, and a fellow Englander like myself. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, thanks for going on last online. minute. I normally do these at ten o'clock on Saturday, but I had mm. a I had a dinner I had to go to, um, so I thought I'd put it back an hour just so I had a bit more breathing space. As as it happened, I got in at twenty past nine because no one likes to stay out late these days. So uh, especially when the weather's as crap as it is. Yeah, that's certainly true. So we are going to be talking about Sky Riders. Mm. Now, it's been called a few other things, uh, depending on which um, uh, country uh, you may have may or may not have seen it in. And uh, it was also released on video um, in many countries under a completely different uh, title. Um, that title was Assault on the Forbidden Fortress. Um, who came up with that title? I'm not quite sure. Because uh, it's a little bit crap, if you ask me. No, I think I, um, I think, think Skyriders is a lot better. Um, I think that's the it, version I saw. Um, yeah, mate. Did you did, you didn't see it at the cinema, right? No, no, no. I I, I wasn't born for another eight years, so uh, no. I, I I saw it on like late night TV when I was seventeen, well, probably Tim. drunk. But it was very very enjoyable. Thanks, thanks for making me feel really old in the first time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Last You're not coming on again. Um, Sorry about that. No, I, I, was, born in the, I was born in 1984, so I'm a, a little bit behind this one, sadly. Although I, <laughs> this... I, I, look, I look like I'm about 146, so, you know. Oh, well, okay. Well, I, 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 Swings I, around about. I, I, I only look like I'm about 142. So yeah. um, the actual um, UK poster quad, mm. I, have a, I have the artwork for that. Let's just grab that and pop it up so people can see. Because this is the um, – now, this film, um, it's quite a strange one because it in the UK, it didn't get released on its own. It got released as a um, double bill mm. with uh, another film that came out around the same time that was a bit of a financial disaster for the studio concerned, which was called um, Avalanche Express, based on a – I believe it was based on an Alistair MacLean novel who did um, mm. uh, Where Eagles Dare. And um, if you haven't heard of Al Al Avalanche Express before, it's famous for being Robert Shaw's last film. And he died of a heart attack during filming. Okay. So they had to redub his his voice. So when you watch Avalanche Express, he's in like about 60% of it. Mm. He's got a very odd sounding voice. And you're thinking, God, Robert Shaw's doing a a good kind of strange <laughs> Russian accent. 
but it's not actually him. And um, back in the late 70s and early 80s, it was not uncommon for um, UK cinemas to show a short film, mm. 10, 15 minutes, before you saw the main feature. So we mm. went to um, go and see the movies. Me and my neighbour, Martin Hodgson, we used to go to cinema a lot together, got dropped off by our parents, you know, pick you up at such and such a time. And um, we, we this film was only on in one screen, and it was... Skyriders Avalanche Express, Skyriders Avalanche Express, and they would it was a double bill. Hmm. So um uh we thought Skyriders was gonna be some kind of nonsense short that we were gonna have to painfully sit through to <laughs> watch our to watch our action film. And um, you know, and I'm sort of watching the first five minutes. And there's this big the the movie starts with a very big helicopter shot, would have been a drone shot these days going over Greece and Athens mm. and then you go into the suburbs, very nicely done. And pretty soon we're at the residence of an American ambassador. And this is during the time of the Greek military junta. And uh, yeah. so there was a lot of people rebelling against them in one way or another. And uh, a group of, I guess you would call them terrorists. Uh, mm. decide, it's never, it's never quite clear who they represent, but um, decide to kidnap <laughs> Susanna York. Who is the the wife of mm. said said um, American senator, who's played by Robert Culp? And um, I suppose the big gimmick in the film is that they they are held hostage in one of the monasteries in mm. Meteora, which is in northern Greece, and is famous for several monasteries in a valley, all being located on the top of big rocks, as depicted in the poster. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and the whole thing is the only way they can get in and get out and rescue them is with uh, hand gliders. They could have just walked up the, the path, I suppose, but cinematically that wouldn't have been as exciting. Um, so I was, we were quite, we were sort of watching it and in the first 10 uh, minutes, there's, you know, there's the kidnap scene and men with masks and machine guns. And I'm sitting there with my mate because we must've been about 10 or something like that. We go, well, this is a very good short, isn't it? This is pretty good. <laughs> and then, um, Avalanche Express was 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 not bad, but it was a bit of a hodgepodge film. They had to mess around a lot with the editing. Mm. It, was, it was not a bad movie by any means. The Sky Riders actually felt like it was the better film. So we went to see Avalanche mm. Express, got another film thrown in for the bargain that was actually just as good, if not better, than the one we went to see. So that's my how I got to see Sky Riders' story. You hmm. saw it on video, right? Or TV? I, I think I saw it late night TV. I think it was replayed. I say it must have been about 17, so 20 odd years ago. I, um, I used to work late um, in bars, restaurants, things like that. I used to come home and watch the like ITV3, the late night replays of all the old films. Right. So uh, I'm pretty sure that this was one of those. God, um, I, I, hope, I hope it wasn't an ITV edit special where they would cut out any kind of Squib shot. No, it was like one o'clock in the morning, so that they didn't care by that point. Right. Um, it's, it's only the ones they do in like three o'clock in the afternoon where they have to worry about grandma. Yes, uh, uh, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the uh, the the first broadcast of Lethal Weapon was mm. infamously cut to ribbons on television. So yeah, much. about six minutes long. Yeah, it's like the action scene <laughs> didn't, didn't make any sense, you know. <laughs> It was like people would sort of start fighting and then the fight would be over and it was like, well, yeah. what happened to the middle bit? Um, well, Skyriders, are, yeah, it's not it's not particularly violent. Mm. I mean, <clears throat> let's um, talk about the film a little bit and, we'll, and then we'll get into the cast. Yeah. So the film was entirely shot in Greece, um, mm. but surprisingly isn't a detective murder mystery drama set in ex an inexpensive hotel where all the actors can basically go on holiday for... Mm. Uh, four months but not far off so um they they shot like i said they shot the entire film in greece and that was pretty difficult to do at that time because the military junta was still mm -hmm. in power in um 70 i think the film was shot towards the end of 75 going into 76 and this is where it was uh, where the climactic battle of mm -hmm. the movie was um filmed yeah so, so this is the valley of uh I don't know if it's called the Valley of Meteora, but the area is known as Meteora. And each one of these 
is a monastery on top of um, a series of rocks. If you're, are you a James Bond fan, Tim? Uh, I used to be. I must admit, the last couple have put me off somewhat. But yes. Yeah, I've got. I've got to. I've got to say, I'm not a big fan of the Craig gear. I have to admit. Um, well, I didn't mind his first one. Yeah, I liked Casino. I liked yeah, Casino Royale right. was really good, and then it, it went. It went too cerebral, and then yeah. it went stupid, and it tried to be Fast and the Furious meets James Bond, and never worked. No, I don't, yeah, I hated that. Um, well, um, before we go down too many rabbit holes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's careful. But <laughs> on the subject of James Bond, this is the monastery that was used in For Your Eyes Only. Mm which is the one that's only accessible by a, by a lift with a sort of little winch thing. Hmm. Um, and then um, this is the one that was used in Skyriders. And you can tell it's the hmm. same one. And by the way, when Skyriders was filmed, this road was not here. This no, road was not, like not a, dusty, was a dusty track. Yeah, it definitely wasn't there um, because there's several shots where you can see straight down from here. Hmm. Um, uh, now, this distinctive staircase, which leads up to the monastery with this round section, features in the film quite a bit. It's packed full of terrorists yeah. um, shooting at people at one one stage. Um, I mean, it's a great film location, hmm. and um, you can actually get onto the road and have a have a quick peek. Um, don't you love this? It's amazing this stuff, isn't it? It's yeah. Just uh, ne ne was never there back in my day, so. Um, that's the monastery up there. That's the bridge that accesses the lower part of it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, basically, um, there was a bit of negotiation that took place and they got uh, permission to film there. I, I dare mm. say a fair bit of money changed hands. Uh, it tends to be the way. Yeah. But um, the thing that makes the film, I suppose, that, that, that makes it a bit different from... Um, your bog standard action picture is the fact mm. that they use gliders to rescue the family yeah. um, hang gliders. And um, the stunt work with that is pretty impressive. Well, uh, I, I was, I was rewatching a bit of it earlier and I, I, I realized that if you made that now, it would have all been done on one of those big led volume sets. Yep. There would be nothing that was real and you, there is a whatever anyone says it feels different when it's done properly yeah you know I you agree. can just tell that if you can tell that someone was there hanging off with your life it adds to the the sense of fear and trepidation that are they going to land in the right place and all that stuff and i just yeah i don't understand why we I, well other than you know for health and safety there is every chance you're going to fall out of the sky so I, I do understand it from an actor's point of view, but I, yeah, it, I think it's it something's gone that used to be there for these sorts of things. I mean, um, there's a there's a sequence where James Coburn, who's the the lead, we'll, we'll actually mm. we'll get onto the cast in a minute, sure. but he he is um, hanging off of a helicopter, mm. and I don't know that he did the whole thing, but I but I have read that he did some of those shots himself. Yeah, I, I, looking at it, it didn't look like him from some. No, I think for the high shots, yeah, it definitely I wasn't don't. him. No, but I think he did some. I think he did some low takes and like some. Yeah. We'll just take the helicopter up a little bit. Hang on, James, for uh, you know, for ten feet, and then we'll put it down again, kind of thing. He definitely did a couple because obviously there wasn't any green screen or studio work there. No, you can see the the steps going up to the the monastery here on the back of the. Um, this is the DVD. Hmm. case the blue way is available from <coughs> 101 films which i just picked up i think i've got it here somewhere um yeah there we go can i um, can i make a a slight observation it's it's a bit of a meta thing but go looking on at, look, looking at this dvd case that you've got on the screen here yeah when did it go from robert colt plays bracken to bracken's life felt uh, you know, seemed perfect until uh, when did they get away from the fact that there's an actual person playing a character? You know, everyone knows it's an actor playing a character. Yeah. But back, back then they used to say so. Now it's Bracken's life, brackets, Chris Hemsworth, whose life seems perfect with wife Ellen, brackets, 
it, it's not the same thing. You know, I, I think that they made a bigger deal of it being played by a person and it was an actor and they were doing a job. Right. Now, it, 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 it's almost trying to be too immersive to the point where I think that it becomes a bit... Um, they're so they, a bit too clever for themselves. Are you saying you prefer the text laid out like this? Or Yeah, I do. Yeah. You know, okay. you know um, Chris Hemsworth playing Thor, who's... Right. Ex, you know, I mean, I just think it, it adds a, it, it makes the it makes the actor human. Right. Yeah, I've got you. I think the actor is an afterthought at the moment to the character, not the other way around. And the actors five times out of t well, at least half the amount of time is the reason you go and see the film. You yeah. Know, it's very rare that you go and see a film that you don't know any of the actors in. Well, that um, yeah, now. that's 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 certainly true for a lot of people. Hmm. Um, it's not so much for me, but I, 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 I used to do a lot of like indie stuff. I, I used to run a film festival, so I didn't know anybody. Which but, uh, uh, which film festival was that? It was a little one near me called Hyper, the Hyperdrive Sci-Fi Film Festival. Uh, oh. It was out, out of Hailsham and um, it ran for about uh, four years. Um, we, we had about 30 films we showed over the course of a weekend, the shorts and longs and packaged into blocks. Um, but yeah, it's just an observation. I, do, I, I wonder why we've demoted the actor to the character, not the other way around. See, it seems a, an odd choice. Yeah, that's in, well. That that that's that's an interesting uh, fact. I and mean, I have to say, when I write my credits mm. out on play brochures and things, I tend to do it the modern way. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's probably, there there's probably a very good reason for it. I'm just probably a little old fashioned in the way I think about these things. I always think actor first, character second, not the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I hear. Well, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. <laughs> Well, let's get let's get into the um, production nitty gritty cast and sure. crew and all that kind of thing. So this was directed by um, Douglas Hickox, mm. um, who's had an interesting career. Now he died quite young mm. in 1988 at 59. Uh, from what I've been able to, to tell, he died um, from heart surgery on the operating table. Yeah. Um, and uh, he did a fair few. Um, uh, sort of British B movie films, yeah. um, and there's there's not a lot of stuff that he did that I've seen. Um, I think I um, let me just put his Wikipedia page up because that was a bit better. As director, he did Brannigan, which I think was one of John Wayne's last mm. movies. I, I never saw it, unfortunately. I, it's one that I will get around to at some point. Maybe if we do another one of these one day, if it's you not, forgive me it, for the early thing, I will um, I will watch it. It's not bad. He did Zulu Dawn, hmm. which we interviewed the second unit director of that on the channel. Really? He was also second unit director on Bridge Too Far and hmm. also director of Rambo 3. Um, but that, I, I can't remember if the interview got taken down because we showed like way too many clips of the movie with sound hmm. and I, I had to be a bit more clever about it. Um, so I've seen a couple of the films that he's seen. I, I think I saw The Hound of the Baskervilles. Yeah, um, I've seen that. Yeah. Um, I think I saw one episode of the series, The Dirty Dozen. Yeah. Uh, it was not good. It wasn't good, was it? No. <laughs> it, it, it felt very sort of He's, studio now. No. He seems like a man who was very happy in the sort of Western era. And when you were trying to pull him into maybe a, out of that into more of a modern aesthetic, he, he wasn't very happy. Yeah. Look at the ones where he, the ones that were good in this list and the ones that were bad i'd say he was happier in the era of the western yeah um well i want to give um props to because one of the things that's really great in the movie hmm. is the soundtrack yes and the soundtrack's written by lalo Schifrin, hmm. um who's i've got several of his albums on vinyl i don't have this one i don't know if it was ever released hmm. he is still alive I thought he was long gone, man. He is still alive. That's amazing. 1932, now, yes. Now he has com he's composed 91. 222. I don't know if that's 222 soundtracks he's done, but it, think, it will be, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a, I mean, that's a huge number. So I'm curious mm. to see which of the ones I've got in my collection. But from the point that, um, you know, when I said to you, if you want to recap the movie, watch it from here. Mm. 
<coughs> from the point that they kind of do the assault on the monastery mm-hmm. to the rescue and the end of the movie, the soundtrack is continuous. It, it never stops. No. Um, and it really, but, it really adds a huge, yeah. huge amount um, to the film. It does, but I'll tell you what adds a better amount. Uh, what, what, what I found most fascinating was he knew exactly when to stop the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so the music went away when when it was something serious and heartfelt when they were talking to each other. There wasn't this background drone of music. It was mm. pro- it felt very real and vis- visceral because there was no background music. And then when it came back, it made perfect sense when it came back. It's very, very well done. So I have the vinyl soundtrack to um, the Osterman Weekend, mm. which is one of his, um, which was so, the last film that Sam Peckinpah directed mm. before he died. Not a brilliant film, but it's 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 worthy of note. Um, that's that's a pretty good soundtrack. He did a great score on Escape to Athena, but he was only the conductor on that. Um, and I've also got the Blu-ray of Roller Coaster. That's another film that I picked up fairly recently. That's an old favourite of mine. Yeah, I've not seen that one. But he's a, he's a um, that's the one where a terrorist is planting bombs on the roller coasters, played by Timothy Bottoms. And uh, yeah. George Siegel is the the guy in charge of security, tracked with sort of mm-hmm. hunting him down. It's a sort of seventies disaster flick, you know. Mm. Uh, good little film, worth mm. worth watching. It's aged pretty well. There's a couple of things in it a bit now. So obviously our lead is Jimmy Coburn, as you like yeah. to call. <clears throat> Sadly, we lost him in uh, seventy four. I have written a play, a stage play about the making of the Magnificent Seven, and that's his. Um, headshot from that. That's considered nice. to be the, the, the movie that launched his film career. Yeah, he, he died in 2002, so he, he had a long old run. He's pretty He's pretty good in the film. I mean, mm. the, 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 the script doesn't allow for a huge amount of character development with no. anyone, really. It's like, this guy's the ex-husband, these guys are the stunt team who, you know, do hang gliding shows, this is yeah. the wife... This is the current husband. Hmm. Um, this is the policeman. This is the policeman's son, who doesn't last very long in the film. There's not <laughs> there's not a lot of nuance um, or depth to anybody. They all sort of play fairly, you know, yeah, straight straightforward roles. Susanna York plays the the wife. Must have been a nice holiday for her in Greece because hmm. I imagine she shot all of her stuff in a not, couldn't have been much longer than two weeks. No, um, I've, seen, I've seen her in quite a lot of stuff. Um, it's just, yeah. She, Very she, famous. She died uh, in 2011, didn't she? Uh, yeah, I, I saw her in a lot of stuff. You would have seen her, her career. You would have seen her in Battle of Britain if you've seen the Battle of Britain movie. Yeah, I think I I, I don't remember her from that, but yeah, I, I have I have seen that. She's the she's the only female lead in the film. Um, it's been a very long time. <laughs> she's the one who has um she's the one who's uh, married to um one of the other characters and. I think he gets injured and oh anyway but yeah mm. it's, it's she's great in it actually um you've got a oh, couple yeah. of british character actors in this but the, there's a few um of, uh, there's a couple of um european actors as well um mm. this is quite funny because this guy's like you know beloved french entertainer but he's playing a greek police captain in a, in a film that's shot in greece he lived a long old time to 94 so he only he only went in 2018 mm. and um uh he, he i mean he had 79 acting credits um mainly in french productions but i have yeah. seen him in a, in, a, in a couple of things it was actually really, but I, think, I thought he was very good in this actually and he um yeah he's not bad you know it's it's a it's not an easy role to make to put any gravitas behind you know no. i mean he, he always looked a bit weaselly but he actually he it felt like it could have gone weaselly very quickly, but actually he he managed to, you know, stand it up. And I think that's a, it's not difficult. It's not an sorry, it's not an easy thing to do. No, I mean like a lot of the characters are very underwritten. I mean James Coburn plays the role like he's played a lot of other roles. Mm. Um, I'll be yeah, honest. Yeah, he, he, he played James Coburn. Yeah, um, Harry Andrews is a British character actor. Mm. We lost him in eighty nine. Um, he's been in all sorts, um, and it's funny because he did the voice 
of general room were in the film Watership Down, the animated mm. original version, so the villain. Um, but uh, you, you would have seen him in loads of things. He's got a bit of a bit part in this. But he was in charge of the Light Brigade, which is a very good film worth seeing if you've not mm -hmm. seen it. And he, I, I, think, I think I did, but I, I, I got about 600 films that I need to watch again because it's been a long time. Only 600? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Um, you know, films I remember being good, but can't remember anything about. Well, oh, that's right. That's that's why we're here to talk about them. So, um, yeah, Harry Andrews is a good, solid actor. I, I, I can imagine the conversation. Listen, mm. mate, do you want a holiday in Greece? We've got a couple of scenes for you. Yeah, uh, yeah sure, that sounds good. I'm pretty sure that was the pitch to, to most yes, of the actors. Schedule me once at the beginning, once at the end, so I can sun myself yeah. three weeks in the middle. Yeah. So, John Beck, who is still with us. Many people will know him as, I think his character name was Blue in Rollerball. Mm -hmm. And he was Jack, Jimmy Khan's friend in, in the 1977 sci-fi mm -hmm. epic Rollerball. Moon Pie, that's right. Sorry, he plays Moon Pie. Um, and he's uh, yeah. kind of, you know, one of the hand glider guys. Um, yeah, there he is in Rollerball. That's a, uh, that's a film I've got to do a stream about sometime, actually. <laughs> That's a film I've definitely got to do a stream about. Um, we'll, we'll John Beck, high concept. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a very interesting movie. Um, he was in, I'm pretty sure Beck was in Dallas for a while with, you know, J.R. Ewing and the original cast lineup back in the day. I might have that wrong, but I've got vague recollection of him being in that. For, yeah, Dallas, 67 episodes. He played Mark hmm. Grace. That's right. I never watched um, Dallas. Well, mate, you know, again, it was Every, high in its day. Well, you were about three years old when that Yeah, was like, once you've been spoiled on JR, you can't go back. The funny thing is, is I used to watch Dallas and The Fall Guy one after another. I think they were both mm. on Friday night. The Fall Guy was a TV show about a stuntman getting into adventures starring Lee Majors, the bionic yeah. man. And in the opening and closing credits of The Fall Guy, there are several shots from um this movie mm. so um sky Rider, there's, there's a shot of um one of the hang gliders coming down in the sheep at the end mm. um so a fashion model who did about six acting roles zuzu she is in this as a female terrorist and um she has like almost no lines looks good on screen though well um i'm just I wasn't seeing gonna say anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay um i thought she was dead but she's still alive i think it was wrongly mm. reported that she was di had died at one point the the um the guy who's the main um terrorist i love the way he's just listed as number one terrorist and well if you're going to be um, a terrorist well you might as well be number one it was werner uh pochath um who was a uh, austrian um, actor and he was also an Olympic uh, skater in his youth. Uh, mm. Tragically, he died of HIV in 1993. Um, but he's really good as the villain. He's got mm. a really good face. You know, one of those faces you put him in a scene, it's just like one of those kinds of actors you, you can't stop watching him. Yeah, he struggled to play a leading man, but yeah, I think as a, as a, yeah. um, well, there he is doing what yeah, he does villain. best, playing playing menacing man with gun. But um, he's pretty he's pretty good in this. Um, I suspect his voice might have been dubbed in this movie because a lot of the voices have been dubbed hmm. um, in the film for sure, and the dubbing is not always very good. And there's also a lot of kind of off camera lines being yeah. thrown in, which I think, being a filmmaker, I strongly suspected that some of them were written up later and added into the edit um yeah the fast and furious seven approach <laughs> yeah, indeed um <laughs> kenneth griffiths is uh, an old favorite character actor uh, who i met um he's in one of my favorite films of all time the wild geese where he plays witty the medic comes from a rather mm -hmm. horrible end he's got a really small scene in in this mm -hmm. um we lost him in 2006 oh, oh, yeah yeah, but he's he's been around for a long time. Was a very popular uh, man, very well liked in the industry. 
Have you noticed how many other people that were in this film have been in Holby City or Casualty? That's where most people cut their acting <laughs> chops, you know. Well, yeah. this, this is the end of their careers, isn't it? Because it's just, yeah. Nearly, well, that's all the all the tabs you've been through. Nearly every one of them has been in Holby City. It's 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 like um, you know who can we get to play the old doctor <laughs> or the uh, man with dementia? Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. So um, there's a couple of uh, um, other people that I want to mention. Hmm. Um, so there's two. Very, um, oh no, who's this one that's died? So Ernie, uh, this guy, he's one of the rescuers, I think, in the movie. Mm -hmm. But is he? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, right. That's him on the left. Okay, mm -hmm. this is in um, the Poseidon Adventure. Now, that's that's a shame that he's passed away because um, I really wanted to interview him. So... Mm -hmm couple of things about him so he's um uh, a really well known widely regarded uh, very well liked stuntman who'd been in the industry for a long time so on the Poseidon adventure which i take it you must have seen one Chris. Right, yes so when the ship turns upside down mm -hmm. he is the guy who falls off the table mm. and plunges into the light fixture in the floor and gets electrocuted yeah i remember his and face it, it's a really good stunt he also, in the Towering Inferno, plays the guy who's with Steve McQueen on the lift going down, the mm. fireman, and nearly nearly falls to his death, but then they put an airbag and um, yeah. he's rescued. So he would have done all of the glider stunts himself. That's from that's from Skyriders, that shot. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, he would have done all those all those stunts in the movie. Yeah. Uh, that I didn't actually know he'd passed away. That's a real shame to to read about that um i think i remember seeing some of the things he did in hot shots and uh some of the some of the stunts he did from hot shots but I yeah can't which ones they might be the ones doing the stairs i mean uh, 144 credits as a stunt man hmm. um and second unit or assistant director so he probably did a did some action uh directing the yeah. other members of the rescue team are made up with barbara trentham who died hmm. only 68 2013 that's uh, that's relatively young. I wonder what happened to her. She's got, um, you know, it's not a massive part, but she's quite cool. Mm. Uh, there's there's two ladies on the the rescue team, and they they do appear to actually do some gliding. Ah, oh, leukemia. Right. She was James Khan's love interest in Rollerball. Mm. That's the only thing I've. Uh, that's the other thing I've seen her in. And she's related to. Uh, she was married to John Cleese at one mm. point. Oh wow. Yeah, I thought women didn't do action sequences before Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, I know. I heard that as well because she invented action sequences, you know. Yeah, and um, the medium of film. <laughs> How did we get onto that? <laughs> anyway, well, I, just, um, I, I find it funny when we're going through action films and there's all these yeah. brilliant women who very few people I have know. Ever heard of, and yeah, then yeah. someone comes out and says, "I started this." Who's like fourteen? Henry Brown is the guy who has now he has um Susanna York on his glider. I think he's predominantly an actor and um the shot where he gets mm -hmm. wounded and he's on the glider I I'm pretty sure that was shot in a studio. That's the only shot that looked like it was shot in a there studio. There was something janky there. Yeah. I agree. Um cuz it just well it might not have been shot in a studio. It may well have been shot in a field, and they just push them in yeah. the air for a bit and put the camera low, and everything's just blue behind them. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, they definitely weren't high up in the air. Um, he's still going. Uh, mainly, I mean, it's interesting. He's a bit part actor. I think there's 69 acting credits. Yeah, he hasn't I done think. a lot last five years. I think he's probably yeah. retired now. But we should have got him on. Should have tracked him down and said, "Come and talk <laughs> about it." No, you know what? I might try and get him. I'll see if I can. Uh, track him down and uh, i'd love to come along for that one that'd be an interesting conversation it would be it would be really interesting so stephen keats i want to talk about as well he was on the rescue team and very sadly uh he's a good looking one on the team he committed mm. suicide in 94 at the age of uh 49 and um mm. don't know why haven't been able to find out it's tragic nonetheless and he did yeah. some pretty good roles um, in some, I mean, 91 acting credits, 
you know, in his 40s is pretty good going back then. No kidding. Three episodes of Law and Order, so I probably saw him on that. Um, Freddy's Nightmares, that sounds like a... Fre oh, that was that Freddy Krueger kind of short horror series where he kind of hosted mm. it. So he was on the he was on the Fall Guy as well. Mm. That's quite funny but because um, he was probably in the credits of the Fall Guy. Um, yeah, so... Yes, yeah, so he's another one who passed away quite young, which is a little bit sad. And the director, Douglas Hickok, as I said, he died at 58. Um, the yeah, other it seems, to, seems to have been a thing for uh, people in this industry that back then. Yeah. I think you, you, you either sort of lasted till you were 50 and the, or you lasted till you were 150. I don't think there was, there was no one in the middle. So Stephanie Matthews, who was the only other, she was the other female member of the hmm. hang gliding team. That's the only credit she's ever got. So I think she probably was a glider expert mm. and probably did all of her scenes because she's the one who comes down in the sheep. Yeah. You can see it's her. Um, and that's um, that's the one, that's the shot that's at the end of the full guy. But that's mm. unusual. She just did that and nothing else, I guess. She, she was um, probably the instructor or something and they just dragged her in for a scene and she that, got a credit at the end. I, well, she had she, she had some dialogue, so they had to credit her. Mm. Um, so that's the the cast. Interesting story. Terry Morse, producer, mm. is he still alive? He is. My God, born in thirty one and still going. Um, let's see what else he produced. So during filming, I don't know the details. A member of the Greek crew, so local crew member, was killed in an explosion, and. Um, he was detained and put in prison and uh, it took $250,000 to facilitate his release so that he could leave the country. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in other words, uh, you need to pay the family a lot of money. Yeah. So, um, or yeah, at least the local military leader. Yeah, indeed. Um, and that's what, that's what happened there. But he's produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Don't mm -hmm. think that was very good. Um, I don't know that I've seen any of the other other films he's produced. Let me have a look. He's not the only producer on um, on Sky Riders. The Return no. of a Man Called Horse. I have seen. Uh, it's not that great. Um, it was one of his earlier ones, wasn't it? I don't. Oh, you've seen Turner and Hooch. Yeah, it. that's the TV movie version yeah. of it. So that would have been a. That wouldn't have been the main film. That would have no, been. No, but a, I think I've seen the TV movie version of it as well. Have um, you? Yeah. That would have been a pilot. Was, that would have been a pilot yeah. for a failed TV series. and I think I've seen that somewhere. Or it might have been a... There is a new version of Turner Hooch. I might have seen that. I don't know. There's too many now. It's interesting as well that you've got three directors of photography, but I'm going to guess that one of them was probably specialist at aerial. Hmm. Um, and then you probably had somebody that did the DOPing for everything else in northern Greece and somebody who did everything in Athens. Um, yeah, maybe, or, or you had someone who's really good with like the action, and versus someone who's really good with the because there was quite a lot of um, really well put together dialogue sequences that I you, you probably need to be quite good at to do. Yeah, um, as opposed to someone who's really good at like shooty shooty bang bang. I it wouldn't surprise me if you had two different people doing those. those no, roles. no. Interesting, I didn't realise this until I just looked just now. Mm. Terry Ackland Snow was the art director on it. Mm. I just met him um, mm. in, at Pinewood Studios about four or five years ago. I was with my friend Alan Tompkins, mm. who was also um, art director. He did Band of Brothers and um, mm. um, Bridge Too Far and, uh, you know, a few, few biggies, uh, Saving Private Ryan, a few things that you might have heard of. And... Terry Ackland. No idea what you're talking about. So he introduced me to Terry Ackland Snow, who had just written a biography. So I bought a copy of it. So I've got that signed. Mm. It's somewhere in here. And he was the art director on this. So you see, I could get him to come on. He's done quite yeah. a lot of stuff as well. Because I knew he he worked on um Did you ever see The Dark Crystal? Uh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, one of the films I'm sure he I'm sure he worked on that. Can't find it on here though. I watched The Great Muppet Caper with my daughter about six weeks ago. There you go. <laughs> um, nice man, Terry. Very, very, very nice guy. Emma yeah. Portios, who did the costumes, that name I know as well. Hmm. Um, yeah, Alien. another one who's been in the industry for ages, also did the costume for Aliens. 
Mm. Also did the costume for Living Daylight, so she probably worked with Terry together because they were both on mm. both of those. Uh. Yeah, so, okay, pretty interesting. All right, let's uh, let's go back to the um, film itself. So um, how, how well, the question is, how well does it hold up um, today? Now, I've watched it. I think three times in the last week or so. Hmm. Um, anyone who wants to see it, by the way, you can watch Sky Riders on YouTube because the whole film is on there. I'm surprised it hasn't been taken down, but it hasn't. It's not a brilliant, it's a pretty low res copy, but I mean, if you're watching it on a small hmm. device, that won't really matter. But so um, have a copy right now. 50 well, years. Mm, 76. Yeah. That, well, because 101 have just released it, so surely they've got the rights for it, haven't they? I, yeah, have I, I don't know. Well, maybe they've just released it. Anyway, it's on this <laughs> chap's um, YouTube channel, Super Rock Dog, and I think he's only got two videos. Um, but this one's had 638,000 views, hmm. and it, it, it is the whole movie. Um, and uh, I just paused it on a shot here where... Um, I'll try and make it a bit bigger, but where they're, they're hand gliding down from the um, monastery escaping. And mm -hmm. again, this was all shot for real, of course, no CGI. Um, I'll only play a short clip because I don't want to get um, in trouble with Pinged. the copyright. Mm -hmm. There's James uh, Coburn. That, that's the guy who passed away in 2020. So, he, mm -hmm. so you know, Stuntman, but he, he, always, he was always a pretty good actor, that guy, um, as well. And again, he would have done this push-off for real he would have gone off there that that would mm. be him going off on the hand glider uh, and they i mean when you look at them then they, they don't look particularly stable do they you've got like a bit of a frame and hand gliders no i mean but they're a bit more sophisticated now don't forget mm. these are the ones that were available in 76 i've seen them now and they're, they're not as spindly as that no but they're just as dangerous my, my wife used to do paragliding and um they used to have a couple of hand gliders go up there and they're always getting stuck in trees it's hilarious <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't be my um, no. uh, favourite um, occupation. So, yeah, he, he, he shoots off. And um, one of the things that I noticed about the film as well is there's kind of a an unusual array of weaponry because in Greece, mm. basically, they were mainly equipped with all the weapons that the Germans left behind after World War II. Yeah. So everybody seems to have an MP40 um, and there's lots of, um, you know, German heavy machine guns mounted on jeeps by the Greek police and this sort of thing, yeah. but the sound um, sound effects for the guns don't match up. No. So they've gone to their library thing and said, "Oh yeah, a mach that machine gun will do, and that rifle will do, and they're, they're not the right." Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm being really pernickety here, but they're not they're not the right sound effects. No, but you got to remember. I mean, you remember seeing it live or as close to it, but yeah, 1976. Yeah. No one gave a damn. No, I know. If it made a bang, no one cared. They, no, they weren't exactly. going. They, they wouldn't waste the half an hour to find the right gun back then. No, indeed. Oh, look, I can see drunk three PO, whose hat I'm wearing, is uh, streaming mm. as he often does on Saturdays. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's. There's not a lot of dialogue in the film. No. One of the things I noticed when I rewatched it is the scenes are very, very perfunctionary. Mm. And um, the film didn't do tremendously well in, in, in America. It didn't do fantastic box office. It did a lot better in, in Europe. Um, but, um, I mean, listen, as a 10-year-old kid, I kind of wanted action, excitement and adventure. And that was what I got. And it's a good sort of 90-minute popcorn movie, um, you know, yeah. and it's a lot better than a lot of the indie low-budget, well, it's, it's better than all of the low-budget indie action films that have been mm. made today. Um, what, 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 did you, what did you think when you, I know you kind of re-watched the last half hour. Yeah, so I always had a special place in my heart for films like this, where you can tell... I, I, this goes back to what I said earlier a little bit, which is the amount of CGI we've got now. Anything like this is refreshing. Mm. Yeah, there is literally none. So you're not looking for it. Your subconscious, your lizard brain, isn't looking for that 
or where did they pass that shot and turn it into CG and back again? Yeah. It's just, you know, it's real people doing real things. And I, I find that so much more compelling. I mean, I, I like the, um, you say that the, there's not a lot of dialogue and there isn't, but what there is actually, I found really, really good because it, it's just, they're not overly verbose. They're not talking on and on and on for no reason. It does exactly what it needs to do to move from one piece to the next. And I don't think that that's a bad thing necessarily, especially no. in a film like this, which is, you know, it's supposed to be shoot, shoot, bang, bang, go home. And I, I think it does all of that. And it is an interesting thing, you know, hand gliding is not exactly what I would choose to go and storm a castle, but if you're going to do that, then it, it's probably the best way. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it, it, it's funny cause I wanted to watch Avalanche Express again this mm. week and I couldn't find it. Um, uh, and I, I wanted, if I was going to buy a physical copy of it, cause it's one of the films I don't have, I wanted a Blu-ray and I couldn't find it anywhere on Blu-ray except for an exorbitant amount of money. So, um, but I wanted to, I wanted to watch them both together again. So I could, is it still the better film, you know, but I have seen Avalanche Express recently. I saw mm. it about three years ago and, um, it was not bad. It still had the same kind of problems that it had before. But I think if I, you know, if I was going to sit down and watch one of them again mm. in the cinema and I can only, only pick one, I think it would be this. Yeah, I agree. I, th well, I, I think I may have seen Avalanche Express at some point, but films like this don't really age because it's all done properly. I don't think this is, looks any worse than anything that's come, that comes out now. I mean, actually, just look, other than the fact you'd have a high DPI camera on it, I don't think it makes that much difference. You know, I, there's, not, there's, not, there's not enough in it to, to justify the amount of um, progress that's been made, I think, since 1976. I think it's, it, it, it's just, a, I, 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 I'm not very good at explaining these things. I usually go away and think about stuff for 45 minutes before I talk. But it's... Um, All right. Yeah, there's something really visceral about this sort of film and i, I, I yeah well this is avalanche um, express and one of the mm. things i've just realized from looking at it is that its release date was 79 mm. so actually sky riders if it got a release earlier than that in the uk mm. i wouldn't have seen it on its original release i mm. saw it when it when when avalanche because avalanche express was heavily advertised on mm. the tv and that's why when i saw the trailer which was full of action and all that kind of stuff i was like mom mom gotta go and see that <laughs> and um <coughs> you know pester 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 kind of thing yeah so uh, I, okay well if martin goes with you because martin was deemed to be the sensible one and slightly older than me and i think it was a uh, um back then we didn't have pg back then it was mm. you had U certificate you had a you had A, which was the equivalent of PG, mm. double A, which meant you had to be sixteen or older, I believe, and X, uh, which was eighteen or older. And um, fortunately, I was six foot tall at fourteen. So after that, <laughs> me and Martin was even taller than me. We used to blag our way into eighteen mm. films all the time. Um, one of the first I saw actually was the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Hmm. So um, I need, I need, do need to watch Avalanche Express again. Um, it's not. It's only got a four point nine rating on um, hmm. IMDb, which I think is a bit unfair. It's not as bad as that. Um, but well, uh, I, th I think with the ratings, um, bear in mind how long IMDb has been around. You, you only, you'd only go and put look at it if you're reviewing it now. So people aren't looking at it in. People are comparing it to now. They're not comparing it to things of its time. I think that's a that's the challenge with a lot of older films. If you look at the reviews, they um, the people 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 say, "Oh, well, the CGI and that was awful." Well, yes, it was made in 1983. You know, what are you going to do? Well, the good thing is, is everything in this is practical. Um, Simon Harrington's just said hi, Lance, in the series The mm. Fall Guy. Like we mentioned earlier, yeah, yeah. A sequel in the opening credits of James Coburn clinging to the helicopter. Actually, that might be. Let me see if I can get The Fall Guy 
opening credits. There's not just there's there's a couple of shots, uh, Simon. We talked about it earlier. Mm. Um, uh, my man here is not familiar with the full guy. No, I wonder if they got um, royalties for that. I wonder if that's why they did it. Well, I think it was probably all all owned by the hmm. same studio because this had this song. You know, I'm just a lonesome cowboy or whatever hmm. the track was. There's so it's, it's got a, like a song. I don't know how much of this I can get away with showing, um, but well, um, yeah, don't play the sound. But you should be all right. Yeah. So. Um, you know, you've basically got a compilation of stunts. That's from Butch Cassidy and the mm. Sundance Kid, and they're going down the river. Um, that's from The Silver Streak. Mm -hmm. um, that. that's, a, that's a great movie. I've got to do a stream on that. It's mm. so underrated. I think it's, it's great a great stunt too. It's yeah, some really good stunts, and it's it's one of it's the best pairing of Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor, and it was the mm. first time they worked together, and. Um, See, there you go. That's the yeah. shot from the Poseidon Adventure, and that's the guy from mm -hmm. Skyriders doing that stunt. And um, that's definitely not him. Uh, that's Lee Majors going out for a walk in uh, his alternative clothing. Um, but uh, yeah, there's Heather Thomas. Yeah, she was uh, she was quite easy on the eye, from what I remember. There he is, Lee Majors. There you go. So that's from yeah. Skyriders. And then I'm pretty sure you've got the that's from Dirty Crazy Larry, Dirty Mary mm. or whatever. And um which that's a killer ending that. And then um Sin verse. That's from Butch Butch and Sundance. Mm. Um and uh, I don't know what that's from. And um, that's from Skyriders again. That's the girl who was only in well, she's only got one IMDB credit, and that's her mm. coming down on the sheet. So, um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so uh, that's the full guy. Um, <laughs> not going to do a stream about that, although there was a really good episode of it where they, um, they were ambush this guy was ambushing a convoy with a microlight and he was chucking grenades, <laughs> chucking grenades down. And that bad guy was Richard Lynch, who's the bad guy in the movie The Sword and the Sorcerer. Have you ever seen that? Oh, maybe not one I can remember. Oh, mate, you need to come on this channel more often. I'm going to give you all kinds of movies to watch. Yeah, um, I, I, I certainly will be. Sword and the Sorcerer was like a massive... Actually, I'm pretty sure I have the vinyl soundtrack to it right here. In fact, I do. There you go. And um, the Sword and the Sorcerer was a big, like... It was an independently financed film. It was kind of a low-budget Conan, mm. but it did really well. And um, I, yeah, I've still got all my vinyl soundtracks. I've got about three hundred of them. Mm. And um, that's a film you definitely want to watch. It's got a really good script, and it's a lot of fun. It's low budget, but it's really well done. That was directed by my good friend, the late Albert Poon, mm. who was a bit of a mentor to me. And he watched all my films, and he used to give me great quotes to put on the um, mm. Blu-rays and things. Um, sadly, he passed away. Last year, and I was actually invited by his uh, wife, um, Cynthia Curran, to go and do a, mm. a li little talk at his um, ceremony. Unfortunately, mm. it was in Hawaii. So, um, yeah, maybe I was, not. I, well, I just I would love to. You, go on. you can't claim expenses. It's, you, 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 yeah. it's a long uh, way. I mean, you know, if I was a Tory MP, I could have done, but, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, but hey ho. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's Skyriders. So if you want yeah. to get the Blu-ray, it's available. There's not anything particularly impressive on the Blu-ray. In fact, if I remember rightly, oh, when you get the 101 set, you get the Blu-ray and the DVD. So you get mm. them both. That's kind of nice. Um, but I think I think there might have been a trailer. I don't think there was anything else. And the trailer is, is very 70s. It's not a good trailer. Um, but it is a film worth worth watching. I would give it probably a 7 out of 10 on IMDb myself. Um, yeah, 7 out, because it's really good action. Basic story. I mean, the plot is full of holes. I could, I could, I could tear it a new arsehole with how many holes there are in the plot. 1976. Um, and it, it, it is quite funny. One of the things that somebody pointed out to me is 
you know, the, the terrorists all occupy this monastery. And there seems to be like, at first you think there's only like 10 of them, but when the monastery gets attacked, hmm. there's like 70 of them because they have lots of extras to get shot. And um, Jim D is saying he probably saw it on TV many moons ago. It's been on telly many times, Jim. So that, that's yeah, entirely... I think it's, it's shown semi-regularly. It probably comes around every three years or so. Simon, I see it. Simon is saying there was a to-do. We, we talked about this. We talked about yeah. all these things, Simon, before you arrived. Um, yes, yeah, they blew uh, someone up. A Greek crew member was killed during filming and there was a big bribe involved in order to get the producer out of the country. Basically, kind of, you know, sort of pay off um, so that that didn't go any further. The family was... You know, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in um, in uh, the seventies. That'd be a couple of worth a couple of million today. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Solid seven out of ten <coughs> from me. Um, if you if you like your good non heavy um, mm. CGI action, if you like if you're a G Jimmy Coburn fan, which I am, mm. um, Susanna York is not in it very often. She's in it a little bit, but she's not in it much. Um, but yeah, I, I would uh, I, I would recommend it, um, and I, I you know so I've got a soft spot uh, for it because uh, I saw it by accident. And if you want to know why, watch the beginning of the stream because I talk about that at the beginning. I didn't even intend to see it; it was totally by accident. So um, before we wrap things up, and I let my um, guest uh, do a little plug uh, for what he's got coming up and all the rest of it. Um, I um, just want to talk about the other things that we've got going on. So next weekend, let me get my diary here. Um, next weekend, I am doing a stream on Sunday. I'm not doing Saturday night. I'm doing it on Sunday, 9 p.m. Um, that is a retro review on, I think that's the day I'm doing Silverado. Yeah, I'm doing the Western Silverado. Uh, very young Kevin Costner, John Cleese is also in it. Incidentally, Kevin Klein, Danny Glover, um, fantastic film. Another film that I've also got the vinyl soundtrack to. Um, and the music was done by Bruce Brofton, who also did the music for Young Sherlock Holmes. If you've seen that, and um, it's just a really great, great western directed by Lawrence Kasdan. So I'm going to be talking all about that. We're going to be looking at the set because it's still there on uh, Google Earth, so we'll be taking a, a look at that. Um, and then the Saturday after that, I am doing a big stream on Yellowstone and the world of Yellowstone, 1923-1883. Are you a fan of that, Tim? I have watched none of it, but I will watch all of it. Well, um, it's... it's it. it's. Uh, I do recommend it. Um, mm. You can start... I, I, with... I've only heard good things. I've just been very, very busy. Yeah, I, I, I certainly, um, yeah, it's one that I, I need to get through. I was going to react to it on the channel, but I don't think I'm going to have time to do all of that. No. Thank you. Well, I'm, um, that stream for me is already pre packed. I've got mm. my good buddy, uh, Australian film director Matthew Holmes, who's a, like me, is a massive Western nut. Nice. He's directed um, The Legend of Ben Hall, which is mm. great. He actually popped into our channel the other day just to say hello when we were doing a live stream, which was great. And awesome. um, he's coming on to discuss that with me. I actually, Taylor Sheridan is the creator, mm. <coughs> and I had a personal message from him the other day in my inbox. Nice. So that was very nice. Um, uh, I really rate it. Um, don't want to get too sidetracked into it now, but um, absolutely fantastic stuff. I'm also going to be doing, I mean, I've got a whole load of other films I'm going to do. I'm going to do The Long Good Friday, which you must mm. have seen that, Tim. I have. Good. I was just getting ready to hit the eject seat button there in case Tim had said no. That would have been a cardinal sin on this channel to have admitted such a thing. Yeah. Um, definitely the best British gangster film of all time. Yes. And I would say one of the best British films of all time. Um mm. So uh, I think so. If I listed te to my top 10 British movies, The Longer Friday would definitely be in, the, in that list. It would certainly be in the top 10, I'd say, yeah. Um, Cobra Catania, who was my co-host last week, uh, hmm. Yellowstone, think The Godfather, but the Sicilian Mafia traded in their suits for cowboy hats. That's a very good summary <laughs> um, of the show. Um, it's, a, it's a great show. Yeah. And I, I'm a big fan of realism. It's, got, it's very real. There's no wokeness. Hmm 
in any of those in any of the shows in that world. So um, I really do. Uh, I really do yeah. like that. Although I, I did see some, <laughs> someone earlier explain how that isn't actually true, but I am going to go into it assuming that they were wrong anyway. Is that what they were talking about Yellowstone? Yeah, they're saying Yellowstone. Actually, if you unpack it in basically what what they're doing is they they're not using any of the woke language but they're talking in the they're talking in the woke um they're still saying all the same things they're just not using the stupid language that they use for everything now um, yeah so, I, I mean i i, I don't I, again i haven't seen it so I don't. I don't think taylor sheridan approaches any of his work like that i just think he wants to tell good stories and puts good characters in it's nat so. it's naturally got really strong female characters in just like they've always been if you look for them i mean obviously there's more now and we get mm. a lot more films from the female perspective and yes things have changed but you know you don't have to look very far to back to find strong female characters as jennifer yeah. lawrence will tell you because as we yeah. all know she invented she, them she probably. invented them all that's exactly right indeed um but uh, um jim jim's mentioned that the white uh, um never is never given the credit it deserves well Funny you should say that, Jim, because I just bought the Blu-ray of that and I just watched it again for the first time since I saw it at the cinema. And you're right that that and Tombstone, which I've also just ordered on Blu-ray today, um, the director's cut, which I don't have and I've never seen. So I've got the director's cut of Tombstone waking its way towards me. Uh, I'm going to be doing a stream on Tombstone. So actually what might be interesting would be to do a, a stream on Tombstone and Costner's White Earp mm. and comparing the two and seeing how they stand up well today. Costner's White Earp movie is actually, yeah, is pretty good. And mm. um, I have seen that one. It, it's interesting. He's saying, I read somewhere that both films started out from the same script. No, that's not true, Jim. That's, uh, that's not true. They were totally separate projects mm. that happened to start at the same time and had some similarities because they were dealing with the same history, but they weren't one project in the beginning. That's, that's not true. I know my, know my production history on that. So and Tim, so, tell us about your channel very quickly. So I, I, I do reactions. So I will watch through um, episodes of series. I'm trying to get into films, but they are a lot longer to edit and I will commentate along with various insights. If I have any, or just make fun and, stupid jokes when i can't um so mainly you uh, mainly tv series mainly tv series i've just finished wednesday the new one which is actually really good i really liked it i, I, I was really liked shocked it. as all hell honestly i expected yeah. to be bashed over the head for six hours and i wasn't and it was lovely no i yeah we actually we talked about that on a stream which also came mm. up and um actually i really enjoyed it um didn't think that the parents were cast very well but well, then it yeah, but I, I watched a video with Az actually, and he he was talking about that because it, it's what is original. So, because if you look at the very original cartoons yeah. of uh, like the uh, comic the strips, Ad the Adams family, the, yeah, the the original Adams family comic strips, they yeah. are cast perfectly. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah, because he he, it, was, he was short and rotund, and yeah, um, he was. I mean, he was tall and skinny. I remember. I don't know how to pull it up, but if, uh, I will. I will. Show, I'll send you a tweet after this, and you'll see. But now, because they, I think everyone fell in love with the ones in the '60s, and then more so in the '90s, who yeah. were more likely to be watching Wednesday are the ones that fell in love with it in the '90s. That's why it feels jarring. But actually, if you go back to the original state, that's what they looked like, and I think it's pretty accurate to the um, the source. You know, I'm always telling people to, that they should be following the source material more. I don't feel like I can. Um, hold this against them too much i just saw the luther film today which is just uh, on no spoilers I, I i love luther but i haven't had a chance to watch it yet so i've only <laughs> seen a i've only seen a few episodes of the original tv <laughs> show of luther um i i did enjoy it um basically oh there you go copa catania is just sub to your channel so you, you've got one more Thank sub you very coming much on there. um that's very kind of him so um yeah, I thought the movie was superb. Hmm. Last 10 minutes, it went a bit villain's lair, James Bond. I was kind of like, am I in a different movie now? What's going on? Hmm. And that, that stretched credibility a little bit 
uh, far. And there was a, there was a few unanswered questions there. Is exactly how this guy had done various things. Yeah, but Luther it, started doing that though towards the end of his yeah. run. Um, it was very good at the beginning. I, I, I watched all of them, but I must admit, I, I fell out of love with it in season five. I just thought it wasn't. Worth I think it. I saw all of yeah, season but, one. Um, that's when it was at its best. It was just really, yeah, very gritty. Perfect. It was, yeah. I thought it was the, like the perfect British detective series. That and The Missing. If no, if, if anyone hasn't seen The Missing, and you want to see how to do a detective, look my, at the, the French detective Baptiste in that. Yeah, my my good friend Jason Fleming was in the first season of The Missing, mm. and he bunked off it for the weekend to come and film with us in Greece, <laughs> and. Um, my uh my film the journey is now up on the channel we we launched mm. it last week i saw uh, you can watch it for free um i don't know how i'm going to get my money back Do you know i had this banner and i forgot to put it up during the stream but <laughs> there we go so just stuck it for the end that was clever of me wasn't it um i just want to also th say uh thank you to all my new subscribers because i've had mm. quite a few i'm creeping up to 2000 now which is um Amazing. fantastic because you only um, just got over the, the 1,000 like two weeks ago, didn't you? It seems to have ramped up massively. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, I did have some help with it. But you know what mm. happens? It's like somebody subscribes and then a mate of theirs subscribes. So, yeah. um, and it's, Well, one day I'll learn what that feels like. Well, listen, I've been doing this <laughs> channel for quite a while. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's taken a lot of um, elbow bet. grease. But I'm loving doing it. And uh, it's mm. one of the few things I can do where I don't have to depend on anyone else. Um, or leave home. Indeed, uh, both of which are a, a massive um, plus. I just mentioned, uh, I'm going to mention this on every show that I do now, that the Outcast Creative is going to be doing False Accounts again, which is the play about the post office scandal, biggest miscarriage of justice in British <laughs> history, still ongoing. Um, we did it twice last year, and it's going to be on in London again the first week of June. It sounds like uh, the rats are breaking through Tim's defensive barriers and will Sorry, be attacking it's, him it's, shortly. It's, it's my dog running backwards and forwards. <laughs> and I, I'm leaving her alone. It's all good. You can, you, can, you, can let, you can let them out in a sec. Yeah, um, so you will. But uh, no, it's, uh, so I'll be back. Um, so I'm going to be back on Wednesday. I do a weekly roundup on Wednesday, usually around 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking about Luther, uh, the Luther film. Um, and also the other stuff that I've watched. I'm a big fan of the Wu-Tang Clan saga. I'm watching that every week. I'm watching BMF every week mm. uh, and a few other shows. South Park, of course. Okay. Um, the latest one was particularly interesting about people using apps on their phone mm. to reply to people with computer-generated texts. You can do that now. So that you, you don't even have to have a conversation with your girlfriend if mm. she's wanting a text off you every five minutes you just copy what she's written to you put it in the app and it automatically generates a reply for you yeah that is actually doable with chat gpt now yeah that's that i've said it done they mention it in the they mm. mention the app in the show and it, it's 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 <laughs> nuts i would just was like oh my god people must, must yeah. people are getting even more disconnected yeah. from each other yeah i mean eventually we're just going to end up with two computers talking to each other and everyone yeah. thinking that you know, yeah. you think I'm writing to you, but you don't want to respond. And I think you're writing to me and I don't want to respond. So our computers are just going to be talking to each other. Uh, that's unfortunately, you know, sadly the case. <laughs> um, but there we are. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, um, so I've already put your link to your channel Amazing. in the description, but you're at TNTV Reactions. Certainly. So if you want to go and check some of Tim's videos out, guys, please do. Yeah. Um, don't forget, if you haven't watched my feature film, The Journey, go on the channel and watch it. Mm. If you like it, please do a review on IMDb because that will help it just gain momentum and stuff. I've got, I've had a couple of extra reviews on there already. It is a particular type of film, and it was shot for a very weeny sum of money. But um, it's also all filmed in Greece, like mm. the film we've just reviewed. Um, we didn't quite get to Meteora, but we got to a few other places. So um, go and check that out. And, um, you know, it, I, it's if you've ever lost anybody uh, mm. young in your life, uh, you might find that it helps you a little bit. Um, Jim D is asking about the post office scandal. Google Horizon post office scandal. And, mate, 
loads of stuff will come up. There's also a ton of videos um, on, yeah, the Outcast Creative. We also, we run an acting class in London and people from mm. the acting class often, we do productions, we do stage plays. We've done it once already. Uh, this is the brochure from, mm -hmm. from the play last year. And um, this is all signed by postmasters who came to see the play who were victimised by this terrible atrocity. And yeah, it's uh, worth learning about because it, it's what, what happens when... Um, computers go wrong. When computers go wrong and the police trust the computer and not the people. Yeah, and, uh, and then it's also about what happens when people learn what has happened and gone wrong, but they still don't give a shit and to cover their reputations, they still send people to prison. Anyway, well, that, that too. And they lied about it. Yeah. And they lied about it. And it's just, oh man, don't get me started. But our no, players not the, let's not go into that. our play is a satire. So it's, it's not like a heavy night out. You'll actually come and you'll learn something serious, but you'll also have a, you'll, you'll also have a few laughs as well, mm. at, entirely at the uh, expense of the bad guys. Um, well, it just remains for me to um, thank Tim for coming on at the last minute. Um, Thanks for said, having me. I said, are you doing really my, good fun. You said, are you doing your stream tonight? I said, yes. Do you want to come on it? And there he was. <laughs> so um, that was. I'm wicked. always around. Honestly, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this. And uh, if you can give me at least two hours notice so I can watch the film next time, then I will <laughs> make sure I do that. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, you, you still had your memory of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm doing, like I said, next Sunday, mm -hmm. nine o'clock at Silverado. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen that, that is a film worth watching. Watch it on the biggest screen you can. The sound mix on it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, no worries, Simon. You can always go back and uh, watch the beginning. And um, thanks for you, Jim, for coming on. Really appreciate it. Guys, do spread the word. I'm um, really needing the channel to, to go through. I've gone through some fairly big things in my life right now, and this is very good for my mental health, this YouTube thing. So uh, yeah. it's, it's all about focusing yeah. my energies in a positive way. Yeah, for those that don't do this, you, you must understand how much like therapy this is just to be able to talk about stuff that actually interests you with people who want to hear it. So yeah, yeah it's really great having everyone talking in the chat and people, you know, us being able to back things backwards and forwards. Um, yeah, yeah. It really makes all the difference. And we, uh, you know, from my point of view, I really appreciate having people along for the ride. So. Well, these, uh, these, um, these days will be the fun days uh, because, um, you know, I'm a moderator on Critical Drinkers chat, and Jesus mm. Christ, you can't keep up with that. There's four, <laughs> four thousand people in there. Like, yeah, well, it, yeah, that's what happens when you. Uh, yeah, yeah. When that, but he, yeah, when that happens, and that, that that what happened to him was something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, went from, like, a, he went from like three thousand subscribers to a hundred and fifty thousand like in three days. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can say he's a really good guy, and I've mm. met him in person and gone down the pub and got drunk with him. So, um, which is know. only right. Absolutely, that's what we do. <laughs> All right, so guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, don't forget, come and see my weekly roundup, eight PM Wednesdays, Eastern mm. Coast time. That in America, that would be like three o'clock in the afternoon. Perfect time to bunk off work early. Um, or tune in next Sunday, nine PM, which would be four PM East Coast time. Uh, for one of these about Silverado, which is an absolutely awesome film. And um, don't forget, if you haven't told somebody that you care about, you love them, pick up the phone and do it now. Don't send a text because that's crap. They like to hear your voice, you know. All right, and we'll see you all again real soon. And...